When you're all finished with a file in Illustrator, it's really quick to be able to save it and then export it. Remember that when people have a file in Illustrator, if I don't have Illustrator on my computer, I can't see your file. Now, in this case, I do have Illustrator on my computer, but we also need to get in the practice of using things as images rather than as Illustrator and Photoshop files because, again, other people don't have these programs. These are pretty vast programs and a majority of the population doesn't have them. Plus, you can't really upload these types of things to the web very easily and people can't view them. So when we talk about having things on the web or going off and printing things, having them as JPEGs or PNGs or other types of images makes them a lot more versatile. So when you're in, when you're, um, going to submit an assignment in this class, you need to be exporting it as an image file. So I have my Illustrator file right now. And if I make a change real quick, like I take this and I drag it down here, you'll see that up here where the image name is, I have this little tiny asterisk that has now popped up next to the image name and or the file name. And it's very important. Like you can see, I have multiple files here, but if I'm um, wanting to switch between files, I can like click and switch between these. So I can have multiple files open here. I can close individual files up here, and then I can close the whole program, which will close everything all together. But when this little asterisk appears next to a file name, it means that a change has been made and that made change has not been saved. So I need to save this file. I can go to file and I can click save and that will allow me to save the file. I can also click control S on my keyboard and that will allow me to save it as well. So even if you're out here working, if you hold control and you click the S key at the same time, you'll see that it will ask if you wanna save. If you're in a legacy format, you can always save that, click okay. And once it saves, you'll see that that little asterisk after it's done saving up here in the top will disappear. So make sure that you're saving your, your files in Illustrator or Photoshop and the asterisk disappears before you export it. Then once you're ready to export it, and this works in Photoshop as well, it just looks a little bit different. Um, we can go to file and we can choose export and we can export for screens. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to file, export, export for screens. This is gonna allow me to see the different artboards inside of Illustrator. Now, artboards are great because you can have multiple things going on in the same file, but we'll get to that in a little bit. If you have an artboard though, you can rename the file right here. So here I can rename the file to be like bus completed and I can finish that name and click out of it. So just clicking on it and then click out of it to click, keep that there. I could also select which artboards are being exported so I can uncheck and check these again. Then over here on the right, I can pick where it's going. This is important because you can choose what direction or what folder this file goes into. So if you have a digital design folder or a folder for this class, you may wanna click this and then navigate to that folder on your computer. So for instance, I can go into my remote learning, into my digital design one class and select that folder and it will show that there. The other thing that's important to note is this check mark for creating subfolders. I highly suggest you uncheck this. It would create a subfolder inside of the folder you just created and then contain this, which just creates an unnecessary folder sometimes. If you wanted it and you needed it for a specific reason, that's great. But in this case, I would highly suggest that you uncheck that. You can also uncheck or keep the open location after export, which will open up the file explorer window on your computer so that you can find it. This might be a great thing to keep checked because then you could just click and drag and drop into your Google Drive folder directly from there. And if you don't know how to upload to your Google Drive folder to submit the assignments, you can go watch that video as well. That's probably linked in the assignment. Lastly, you've got format down here. Right now it's formatted as a PNG, which is a type of image. That, a PNG essentially is an image that has a transparent background if it is available on the image. And there's different versions, PNG and PNG 8, and that's just quality. You can just leave it at PNG. If you wanna do a JPEG file, which doesn't have a transparent background, you can choose the highest resolution one of JPEG 100, which will try and give you the highest resolution. You can then click export artboard, and that will export to your computer. And that will then, you can see, open up a file folder window, which might open on my other screen. So I'll bring it over here. It automatically opened it up and I now have my completed file with the number 100 at the end because it's a JPEG 100. I could then drag and drop this into my Google Drive folder to submit this. It is important that you not only submit this, but also the Illustrator file 
both versions need to be submitted for the assignment. If you're in Photoshop, both the image and the PSD file need to be submitted inside of your assignments.